Hi, welcome to Pops Quiz. This month I've, I'm joined by Sarah Weldon who has agreed to answer my questions. Sarah is a Microsoft Innovative Educator and Fellow of the Royal Ge Geographical Society, working with schools worldwide through Skype in the classroom. Though she also does talks in schools and makes videos for teens and teachers on YouTube. Next year, Sarah will be rowing solo around the coast of Britain, following the Viking routes and visiting schools. All of her, Sarah's links will be in the description down below. Over to you, Sarah. Hi, Poppy! Well, why do I love Psycom? I love Psycom because it lets me meet lots and lots of new people that I've never met before and it takes me on lots of adventures all over the world as well and there's nothing better than being able to share those journeys with the people that I meet every day and being able to answer questions about the world. As an explorer, one of my favourite ways of engaging people in science, technology, engineering and maths is by drawing comparisons between the way that we travelled today and also the way we travelled in the past. For example, here I have a piece of optical calcite. This is just the rock. This one is Icelandic spar. And a thousand years ago, the Vikings would use this to navigate not just around Britain, but all over the world. And it works by drawing a little dot on the top, and when you get the, the dots lined up, you get a process of refraction, and it shines onto a polaris, which is a little bit like a sundial, and you can use this to tell you whether to go north, south, east, or west, because we have to remember a thousand years ago when the Vikings were traveling, they didn't have compasses and they didn't have maps. So this stone would actually help them to navigate. Now, the modern day equivalent is this, and this is a Google Glass, and this also has a little piece of glass. Um, this one is actually pretty much the same size as my optical calcite, and this modern piece of glass is attached to a computer. You can hear the sound through the bone at the back of your head behind your ear, so the sound doesn't travel through your ear, but it travels through the bone, and using this little computer just in front of my eye, I can actually look at a compass and I can see which way is north, south, east and west. So that's one of the ways that I get really excited about how we explored in the past and how we explore a thousand years later today. Now what message would I give people today about STEM? My advice to you is don't worry, if you, if you just don't get it in school, don't panic. I was absolutely rubbish at science in school. I failed my science, I failed my maths, and I just didn't get it at all. I didn't understand why, what, what was the point in learning all these silly equations and what bearing did it have on the real world. And it wasn't until I was a grown up, so many, many years later, that I suddenly everything clicked and started to make sense. And actually I ended up becoming a neuropsychologist studying how the biology of the brain affects behavior. And I also went on to study medicine and specializing in hyperbaric medicine. So medicine in space, in an underwater situation, so diving medicine, and also in aviation medicine. So it really doesn't matter. Obviously it's good if you can study as hard as you can now, but really don't panic. You can still absolutely love science and you can still love technology, engineering and maths, but sometimes they make more sense later on once you're out in the wider world, so don't panic. STEM has taken me to some really, really amazing places. I never would have been, I never would have had the chance to be an explorer if I hadn't been really interested in STEM and had the opportunity to study more. So really science, technology, engineering and maths can be a passport to lots of exciting adventures. Uh, every day I get to teach young people all over the world as a Microsoft innovative educator, so through Skype in the classroom, but I've been to some really incredible places. I spent some time studying medicinal plants in the Amazon jungle, I've looked at the effects of alcoholism on the human brain in an Inuit population in the Arctic, um, I spent some time in India looking at the effects of malnutrition 
on the brain development of children and I've really been to some incredible places, even some archaeological digs and I'd never travelled before until I started study, studying science. So really the world's your oyster, just get out there and, and don't be afraid to say yes to lots of exciting opportunities, you never know where your next adventure will be. Thanks for answering my question Sarah. I'd love to go on expeditions when I'm older. Good luck with your biking quest. We're studying Vikings at school and I can't wait to see where your adventure takes you. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe and join me next time when I'll be back with more amazing science communicators. Thanks for watching. Bye!